I became interested in American secularism a little bit before the 9-11 attacks. Um, and I was doing some preliminary research, and then I lived across the street from the World Trade Center during the 9-11 attacks. And it struck me that I needed to get a better handle on the relationship between religion, politics, and violence. And then for the next 15 years, I was researching the very complicated subject of American secularism. Secularism is really at its core uh, a political philosophy about how we best regulate the relationship between government, religious groups, and religious individuals. Uh, and since the overwhelming majority of Americans are religious, and since we have a great government with a wonderful constitution, it's really, really important that Americans think carefully and profoundly about what the nature of that relationship is going to be. I think they need to understand that separation of church and state is one way of being secular. That's the first major misconception. A lot of people think that secularism is separation of church and state, and it's actually not. They're different types of policies, and separationism is clearly one of them. I think people need to get a better handle on the fact that there's a lot of disagreement about whether the Founding Fathers really had separation of church and state in mind. Uh, maybe they had different types of secular policies in mind. So the single greatest misconception uh, that I have to deal with when I speak about secularism, well there are actually two, the first is that it's atheism. And the second is that it's reducible to separation of church and state, when in fact there are other ways that states can be secular. Uh, for example, there's a policy known as accommodationism. Uh, in France, they have a very different model, predicated on a different history and a different culture, and it's referred to as laïcité, and it's very, very different from the separation of church and state tradition in the United States. I really think it's much more relevant now than in past elections, and I think the, the watershed mark was probably 9-11. Uh, I think from 2001 forward, uh, questions of church and state in the United States became supercharged, right, or supersized. And we have to think much more carefully right, about these issues nowadays with the rise of uh, white conservative evangelical Christians as they found their political voice and as they found their political infrastructure and their legal philosophies have become very, very sophisticated. This has created a new dynamic uh, in the United States. To put, put it differently, the old age of separationism where John F. Kennedy could say, I believe in an America, where separation of church and state is absolute, those days are over, right? And Barack Obama is a big part of putting an end to that because Barack Obama is not a separationist secularist. So on both sides, on the Democratic side and the Republican side, we really need to ponder very carefully how we calibrate this relationship between religion and government. My two latest books on secularism, uh, the first one was called How to Be Secular, A Call to Arms for Religious Freedom. Uh, this text was released in 2012, and there I was trying to sample the genome of American secularism. Uh, it had struck me that nobody had really written about the history of the secular tradition in the United States. And one of the most curious things that I discovered in that text was how religious that tradition was. So nowadays people assume secularism is atheism, right? which I think is um, a mistake. Uh, but in researching the text, it became very, very clear to me right, that the American secular tradition emerges primarily out of an evangelical dissenting tradition, out of a Baptist tradition. Eventually, uh, Jews in the mid-century, the mid-20th century, pick up the American secular tradition. So it's a religious story, and a lot of people uh, don't know that, and I found that really fascinating.